months later, in October, the island reclamation is finished. 94 million cubic meters of sand have been pumped into the Arabian Gulf to create the perfect palm shape. In just over two years, the Palm Island has finally risen from the sea. The deadline has been met just on time, and phase one of this monumental engineering challenge has been accomplished. There is still a very long way to go. Phase one is only the completion of the foundations. Now to fulfill the Crown Prince's dream. 4,500 houses and apartments, hotels and shopping malls must be built along the waterfront. This sand island must support an entire city. But here lies the next major problem. Sand is not easy to build on. Because the sand has been sprayed into position, it's loose and uncompacted. We get the material for the islands uh, dredged from the seabed which means that all the fine materials are already cleansed from the sands. You can drive on it within a couple hours after you reclaim it. However, it's not satisfactory to build on. But a strong base is vital to support this city at sea. Before construction can start, engineers must find a way to compact the sand to make it firm. In theory, the idea is simple. All we have to do then is compress the top layer. As you can see, when you press down, very little displacement, except straight down, nothing to the side. That gives us a firm surface to build on. But in reality, the engineers are working with an area spread over five square kilometers. Over time, the sand will compact naturally, but this will take years. And time is something the engineers don't have. Construction of the infrastructure must start immediately. As if the schedule wasn't pressure enough, there is another, more important reason why the foundations of the city must be made extra strong. Dubai sits just on the edge of a major earthquake zone. Bam, Iran, north of the Arabian Gulf. 5.26 a.m., 26th of December, 2003. The town is hit by a quake measuring a massive 6.6 on the Richter scale. In minutes, 60% of the buildings are leveled. 43,000 are dead, 20,000 injured, and 60,000 are homeless. Following this, multiple quakes hit Dubai 480 kilometers across the Arabian Gulf. It's a wake-up call to the Palm Island project. If the epicenter hit Dubai, it could spell disaster. Should an earthquake come through the area, the sand might lose its cohesiveness down deep. The reclamation process, pile sand one grain upon another. If we put the ocean around it, you see the island. However, the lateral forces of an earthquake make the island disappear. This terrifying phenomenon is called liquefaction. It happens when a quake shakes the Earth's surface, causing sand particles to move. As the sand compacts, it pushes the water between the particles upwards, making the ground liquefy. It means the island would sink back into the sea. The team work out they need to compact a layer of sand 12 meters deep, too deep to compact by normal road roller. The only solution is a process called vibrocompaction. January 2004, 15 machines work around the clock to firm up the land. Probes drill over 200,000 holes into the ground across the surface of the island. High pressure water and air drives each probe deep into the earth. This shaft then vibrates, shaking the ground around it. The earth is compacted. It's a tried and tested formula. As the sand compacts and sinks, more sand is poured in until the area around the probes is rock solid. 
It takes the team eight months to stabilize the 17 palm fronds, but it has to be done to ensure the safety of 120,000 people who will live and work here. March 2004, two and a half years into the project, and Palm Jamira is ready to become a building site. Now thousands of trucks and cranes, tons of supplies, and 2,000 laborers descend on the island. This is the most complicated part of the project, the installation of the infrastructure, gas pipes, electricity cables, water supply, and buildings. They're building an entire city out at sea in just two years. Nothing like this has ever been attempted before. For project manager Scott Hutchinson, building the apartments is a massive logistical nightmare. I've probably worked on three or four other billion dollar projects before, uh, but this is without a doubt the biggest and the most complex that I've ever seen. And, and I can't imagine other projects being any more complex than this. 850 buses ferry the 40,000 strong Asian workforce on and off the island in two 12-hour shifts. They'll work in grueling temperatures of up to 48 degrees Celsius, as well as thousands of people, millions of tons of concrete and steel are shipped in from around the world and driven onto the palm. 51 different contractors build houses, roads, canals, shopping centers, sewage plants, and each part of the jigsaw must meet the next perfectly. To stay, all the materials must arrive on site exactly on time, and they will go to any lengths if they don't. If material isn't showing up from overseas, you put somebody on the plane and, and fly the guy out there to get it done. You don't wait, you don't uh, sort of react, you just get out there and try and be proactive, because otherwise a job the size never gets done. Supply is not the only problem. Installation of the utilities and pipelines is a massive headache. Miles and miles of gas and water pipelines need to be laid across many different parts of the construction site. Munir Haidar, head of the technical team, knows that on a job this size, a good plan is vital. It's not that there is no plan, there is a plan, but you have to monitor and adjust this plan on a daily basis because it changes every day. Since the island's launch in 2001, it's changed beyond recognition. Originally, Palm Jumeirah was designed to house and service 60,000 people. But by 2004, developers realized the public loved the idea so much, they doubled the capacity. Everybody's changing their requirements and you have to learn to react very quickly to that. And in Dubai, things move quickly. The pressure is audibly. When the Palm was first released to the public, all the houses sold in three days. The most expensive go for $1.2 million. David Beckham and the England football team are amongst the owners. Now, three years on, the residents want to move in. There are over 1,800 villas to build on the Palm fronts. The delivery date looms nearer, and many of the houses are still at ground level. The schedule is slipping, but the Crown Prince has promised the world a luxury location by 2006. The deadline must be met. To add to the pressure, the design trunk gets more elaborate every year. This 1.6 kilometer stretch will carry at least 8,000 villa and apartment complexes, 220 shopping malls and restaurants, and the developers are still threatening more. A new plan is the 36-story Palm Tower, more space for shops, restaurants, and 450 deluxe apartments. But all this extra development comes at a price. The deadline for the trunk has slipped to 2008. Well, I guess one of the best parts about it is that when you get frustrated of all the challenges and the paperwork and the meetings and everything that goes with building a project like this, come out, you see the sunset, you see the sea, and uh, you really.